Hi everybody, I'm Andrew and welcome back to my 2017 Volkswagen Alltrack. Now you might notice that I'm wearing short sleeves today and that's because the high in February is 57 degrees. <laughs> and I think it's also supposed to snow this weekend. And if that doesn't describe North Carolina weather, then I don't know what does. But anyway, this is a car channel. <laughs> so that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is actually about this. Well, not this, this is a box, but it's about what's inside this box which is something called OBD-11. It's this little black thing right here. If you're familiar with VWs, you may have heard of this before. What it is is a code reader and a coding tool. Um, it's something that allows you to actually connect to the car's computer systems and change different functions within the car. And today, I'm gonna show you how I used OBD-11 to code this car. I'll give you a quick introduction of how OBD-11 works and show you how I did some of the things that I did. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do is locate your car's OBD port. And in this car, and I believe in all Mark 7s, it is right up under here. I don't know if you can see it, it's purple, under the driver's side footwell. So OBD 11 simply plugs right into there like that. You can see it lights up once it's plugged in. The next thing you're going to need to do is open the OBD11 app on your phone or download it first and then open it. Now, if you buy the older version of OBD11, you have to have an Android phone in order to use it. However, the version that I have is the next generation one, which now works with iPhones as well. So as you can see here, I've already got it downloaded because well, spoiler alert, I already did all this stuff like two months ago, but I'm filming the video today. <laughs> so anyway, click on the OBD-11 app, and you can see it says, first, plug in the device to the vehicle's OBD port and press connect. Um, and it is a good idea to just have your car's ignition switched on during this. It doesn't have to be all the way on. The engine doesn't need to be running, but it is a good idea to have the ignition on. So once you do that, hit connect, and It'll connect via Bluetooth, as you can see. Six hours later. And there you go, it's connected. And you can see here, it now says tap to scan. And that's if you wanted to have it scan all of the car's computer modules to find error codes or faults. Um, but we're not gonna do that right now, but that is something that you can do. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick overview of the OBD-11 app here, what it looks like. So, like I said before, this is the home screen where you can scan uh, for error codes. You can see your it identifies your car. Um, the first time you download it and load it up, you put in your VIN number, and that's kind of how it figures out what your car is. And I think you can change that picture if you want, but uh, who cares? Um, <laughs> you can see that it shows your car's uh, battery status right there, uh, which is which is handy, especially if you're doing this with the engine off and just the ignition on like I am. So anyway, down at the bottom, hopefully you can see is a couple different things. Um, you can see profile, which is just, you can see how many credits you have and you know, you change your, your password and stuff like that. Um, second tab is your vehicle and this is all your vehicle information. Um, again, you can see there's my VIN number right there. Um, the year and your mileage, although your mileage is in kilometers, but whatever um, and we'll get more into this these buttons down here in just a second this tab on the other side is apps and one of the things that I like about OBD 11 is it offers a number of these one-click apps basically these are coding functions um, or coding modifications that they've already done for you and you can just activate them or change them without having to actually do any sort of coding yourself. So I'll show you how this works with one of the things that I actually did uh, to my car, which is the fog lights with the DRLs. You may have seen when I was standing in front of the car earlier that my fog lights were on with my running lights. And so this is how I did this. Just click on this. It takes a second to load. Seven hours later. And you can see there's a button right here that says change value when you click on that. You can either select it off, which is the default, or on, which is what I have it set to. And these one-click apps, they cost uh, credits. And I think when you buy it, you get a certain number of credits for free, or you can 
buy more credits. I don't know how much they cost, but anyway, I have the Pro Edition, so it came with like 400 credits or something like that. But anyway, so then once you change it, you just hit activate, and that's all you have to do. So as you may have seen, there are a lot of different things that you can change with those one-click apps. Um, it's not just your lights. Um, for instance, a couple other things that I did, I activated the needle sweep in the gauge cluster when you turn on the car. Um, I think GTIs and Golf R's have that standard, but mine didn't do that, so I was able to turn that on. I was also able to completely turn off my uh, seatbelt chime. Something else I was able to do is in the gauge cluster, I was able to activate a display that I did not have before, which is a refuel quantity display. Um, as you can see, in addition to your regular driving range, you now have this, which tells you exactly how much fuel you actually need, which is kind of cool. But by far one of my favorite things that I did with the one-click apps is this right here. And you can see it's called ACC Distance Settings in the Vehicle Menu. And it's now set to on. And basically what that allows you to do is this is the stock uh, vehicle settings menu that you get in this car. And in the Assistance Systems menu, you can see here under Adaptive Cruise Control, there is now the option, the checkbox, for last distance selected and what that means is that it remembers your last radar cruise distance which is great because before every single time you set the cruise control you also had to set the distance and that got really annoying but now it remembers it so all you have to do is just set the speed every time but anyway there's tons of other things that you can do with these one-click apps and some of them are model specific meaning if you have a GTI or a Golf R or an Alltrack, some of them might be different depending on which car you have. I will also say that from what I've seen, the one-click apps can be a little bit hit or miss. Um, sometimes they don't always work, but for the most part, they're pretty good. But anyway, let's go back to the OBD11 app here and specifically to these blue buttons, which I mentioned before. And you'll notice one of them says control units. Now. The other thing that OBD11 allows you to do, specifically if you have the Pro version, is it allows you to do adaptions and long coding. And that is how you are able to actually access or change other parameters that you can't do from the OneTouch apps. And the adaptions are how I was able to do two of the biggest things that I did with OBD11, and one of which I'll probably put in the title of the video, which I'll get to in a second. but. If you notice up here, my turn signal is on, but my running lights are still on. Now, normally on these cars, the running lights go off when you put the turn signal on, but I was able to code them so that they stay on um, because I think it looks kind of stupid when they go off. That's just me, but you know, whatever. I think it looks better this way. But the big thing that you're gonna notice is from the back, and that is look at the turn signals on my car. Now, if you're not familiar with the Golf Alltrack, these are two separate bulbs here. And normally, all of this lights up with both the brake lights and the turn signals. Um, however, you can see that my car now mimics the European style taillights with just the turn signal on the bottom. And so this piece on the top is now just the brake light as well. Um, of course, the, uh, the one difference is that in Europe, the turn signals are orange. Um, unfortunately, if you wanted to do that here in the U.S., you would have to actually buy new taillight lenses um, that didn't have the sort of red uh, stuff in them. <laughs> but I was at least able to make them mimic the light pattern of the Euro taillights. And so let's go ahead and talk about how actually I was able to do that. So like I mentioned before, there's this button here that says control units. And when you click on that, you can see it actually brings up a list of all the different computer systems within the car. And then when you click on these, you actually go into adaptions and you can see, he says, all of the different uh, modules in that computer system. For instance, I just clicked on 09 Central Electronics, which is what you access the lights with. 
and you can see here of course it's all in German but these are all the different lighting modules lighting functions within the car so I'll put up on the screen right now and probably in the description to the instructions on how to actually make your taillights uh, operate like this um, all of the different steps that you have to do be warned it is quite a bit that you have to change <laughs> um, but basically how you do that is you go in here and you select one of these light functions I, I don't know what this one is so I'm not gonna change anything obviously but um, for instance this one and then there's all these different parameters which you click on and then you basically change them from one thing to another and when you're done you hit slide to right and that's what actually confirms the change once again I'll put that up on the screen right now and you can pause the video and screenshot it uh, if you want to actually do this yourself and I'll also show you what it looks like with all the lights on and, and the brake lights and whatnot And once again, this is not the only thing that you can do with your taillights either. Um, there is also a way to make these inner pieces light up with the outer pieces as brake lights. So if you wanted the L's and the dots to both be brake lights, you could also do that. And there is also a way to make these flash back and forth um, as your turn signals, but I think it looks kind of stupid. It will make the back of your car look like a railroad crossing <laughs> I also just remembered one more thing that you might notice in this video and that is that my fog lights As well as all of my tail lights um, brake lights turn signals and reverse lights are all LED and Again in the US that's not factory, but there's no coating actually required to swap your bulbs out, luckily. So that's a quick overview of OBD11 and the things that I coded using OBD11 on my 2017 Volkswagen Alltrack. Um, if you have any questions, uh, for instance, if you own one of these cars or any other Mark 7, really, um, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it was interesting, which probably only a few of us really nerdy people will. <laughs> But anyway, if you did like it, give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing because I have plenty more content coming with this car and others.